Rink T, outdoor adventure, and we're out again with Billy Dog. Uh, today we're going to do a very simple survival fire. It's called a snake hole fire. We've not made a film for a couple of weeks, but we've been outside doing loads of training in preparation for some future adventures, which could be quite exciting. Watch this space. This area is a great little piece of woodland, left to its own devices to grow wild. I've just grabbed some dead hazel on the way down through the forest. So I've got a pile of dead hazel down here, standing dead hazel. Like I say, it's raining now, it's not too bad. You might be able to see a bit of rain up river there, but uh, it is raining. I'm under trees a little bit, but if I were out in open, I'd be getting a bit wet. But uh, yeah, you don't need much for this. I'm just going to use the Swiss Army knife. Yep, just the old sack. And uh, a ferro rod to spark the fire up. Other than that, we're rocking and rolling. First step, make yourself a digging stick. It's a bit like the chicken and the egg, which comes first. It'd be ideal to harden the end of your digging stick, but you've not got a fire in the coals to harden it. So we'll have to make do with what we've got. So if you can find a bit of hardwood, ideal. Other than that, just work with what you've got. As long as it can do a bit of digging. So all I'm doing is I'm making a bit of a chisel. Yep, yeah, just going to be a chisel. A nice digging stick. Could be a bit longer than that if you want, but that's long enough. A couple of feet. Three feet would be alright. Like I say, just work with what you've got. Get yourself a nice steep bank, yeah, what you can find. I'm making a flat area, that's where my pot's gonna go. Yeah, got my digging stick. Billy's just gonna probably start digging on me nice flat area. No, maybe not. Found a nice worm, yeah, so if I was survival, then I'd go on me hook. Another nice worm. I'll keep this in my memory banks for in future. So there, I've got a nice flat face to work with. So now, what we're going to do, I'm going to go in there. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a massive hole. Find out, Billy. About a foot down, something like that. Yeah, maybe 8 inches, 10 inches. Right, Billy, let me do this, pal. Come on, I know. Good boy. Don't start digging there. Loads of worms. If you had a big knife, something like a machete, and you had the means to sharpen it afterwards, because bearing in mind you've got to look after your tools, you could even use that. I'm only using the Swiss Army knife today. Once we've got a hole built, and that's a decent, uh, about eight, ten inches in, we're going to come down then, this is going to be with chimney. So I'm looking for a spot about there and I'm going to start digging down.
Nurhan Koş teybeli. Hey. Nurhan Koş. Hey. Always handy to have some tinder in weather like this. I tend to like to collect it when I'm when I'm moving about, when I'm training, but uh, in a proper wilderness survival situation or anything like that, you need to be constantly gathering your tinder as you're moving. If you see it, you don't leave it. I'm going to do a, a feather stick or two as well, just to get it going. In fact, I'm going to get two feather sticks out of that. That's the best way to split a stick with the uh, with the Swiss Army knife. Do it like that. Yeah, you're not putting any uh, too much pressure on the spring then. Yeah. And I'm going on this bike, so I'm not going to uh, hit my knife on the rocks. Right, so we're ready to go. Just gonna whap a few sparks onto this birch bark and a bit of tinder. Pop it in there. that in the first stick. Get that right in there. Straight away we've got a jet. Just keep loading it up from down here. It'll soon start to uh, boiling with a ferocious jet. Now while that gets itself consolidated and this smoke comes down, it's gonna pop a few stones because what you don't want to do is seal the top off so if you're going to put a pot on make sure you've got a few stones just around the edge that you can sit your pot on so i've got three stones like that let's move that one a bit over there and my pot should be able to sit nicely on top of them because if you seal it you're going to stop it you're just stopping it breathing then, same as any other fire. Still smoking a bit, yeah.
Right, well my dinner's nearly ready. So, there you have it. Pretty simple to build. Yeah, snake hole fire pit. Or a bushcraft uh, jet fire or something like that. But, yeah, it's banging out. So, probably took, yeah, it's, it's probably quicker than a normal fire to boil it. Not massively. Uh, depends. Sometimes you can make a bit of a bigger hole, a bigger chimney, bigger flue, depending on the size of your pot. I've got quite a small pot today. If I'd have had my uh, 12 centimetre zebra pot, I'd have made that a little bigger. So then you've got a bit more of a, a vent. You probably get your flames coming up a bit better. It's done a good job. It's not took long to get that boiling, really. I've got a bit of pasta and noodles in there and what have you. So, but yeah, would I build it all the time? Probably not. Would I build it? In a long term sort of camp. So I have my camp set up with my main fire and then I just wanted something outside under a bit of a shelter for a brew every now and then. If I was gathering water straight from the river or straight from the lake and I wanted it boiling quickly. Yeah, possibly. Like I say, uses minimal wood, minimal resources. Once it's built, it's there. Is it worth building for a one-off when you're just moving along? Possibly not. But like I say, in a camp, yeah, yeah. If I was fishing here for the day, then yeah, possibly. And I was going to have multiple brews, but I didn't want to be using lots of firewood, spending time gathering firewood. Yeah, possibly. Well, yeah, anyway, thanks for joining me and Billy. So, Rick T, Outdoor Adventure, and Billy Dog, and we'll catch you again real soon. Ta-da.